ever feel like the universe is trying to tell us something, but we just uh, miss the memo? Hmm. I see what you mean. That's kind of how I feel about this whole Nimitz encounter. Yeah, this one's a head scratcher. It all starts back on November 14th, 2004. Routine training exercise off the coast of California. Yeah. You've got the crew of the USS Nimitz, massive aircraft carrier. Right. And a couple of F-A-18 Super Hornets piloted by Commander David Fravor and Lieutenant Commander Jim Slate. They're just going about their day when, well, things get a little strange. And what really sets this case apart, it's not just, you know, who was involved. It's what they had backing them up. The tech. The USS Princeton, a guided missile cruiser that was also in the area. Sure. It had been tracking these unidentified objects on their radar for days. For days. Okay, so hold on. We're already talking about highly trained Navy pilots, some of the most sophisticated radar systems in the world. This wasn't just some, like, you know, some guy with a telescope in his backyard. Not at all. This was the real deal. So what did they actually see? This is where it gets interesting, right? All right, so Fravor and Slate described a white oval-shaped craft, about 40 feet long, hovering just above the water. Now, that description alone, maybe not all that unusual in the world of UFO sightings. Well, right, it's just going to say. But what happened next, well, that's what throws a wrench into the whole, it was just a weather balloon explanation. Because this thing could move. It moved. Ah. Okay, give me the details. How? Imagine this. You're in an F-A-18, one of the most advanced fighter jets ever built, right? You're trained to react, like, instantly to anything the skies can throw at you. Mm -hmm. And then you see this thing, this craft, just darting around, changing direction with an agility that, I mean, it seems to defy physics. You're kidding. That's what these pilots were dealing with. They're trying to intercept it, get a visual, and it's like, I don't know, trying to hit a fly with a laser pointer. While riding a roller coaster? Exactly. <laughs> I'm getting motion sickness just thinking about it. Fravor, in later interviews, he compared it to, like, a ping pong ball bouncing erratically. <laughs> I said trying to predict its movements. It was like trying to hit a, a fast moving marble with another marble, but like 20 miles away. Oh, forget it. And it's no wonder this encounter shook them up and not just them. This thing was playing tag with the U.S. Navy and winning. Yeah. What kind of technology are we even talking about here? Well, the million dollar question, isn't it? Right. The F-A-18, I mean, it's capable of incredible speeds, incredible maneuvers. This object, this was on a whole other level. Yeah. Some researchers have suggested, you know, advanced propulsion systems, maybe even something that distorts space time itself. Whoa. But honestly, it's so far beyond our current understanding. We're, we're basically left scratching our heads. It's like this thing was dropped into the middle of that training exercise straight out of a science fiction movie. I can't even imagine the debriefing after that. Right. So about that training exercise, yeah. You know what gets me about all this? We're talking about the U.S. Navy. Right. The most powerful Navy in the world. Yeah. And they're basically being shown up by, well, something. It really does kind of challenge our assumptions, doesn't it? Yeah. What's possible, you know? Totally. And look, it's not like they just shrugged it off, right? Yeah. The Nimitz encounter. Yeah. This triggered a pretty extensive investigation. Okay, but we've already got, like top-notch pilots, we've got the radar systems, all that stuff backing up this story. Right. What more could an investigation even, like, dig up at that point? Well, think about it. It wasn't just a, like, a fleeting blip, you know? Okay. This wasn't just, oh, we saw something for a second, then it was gone. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. The USS Princeton's radar. Right. That tracked this object at various locations. Really? Throughout the Actual, evening. Wow. So yeah. that kind of persistent tracking, ah, all those data points, yeah. it gives you a much clearer picture of what happened. Okay, yeah, for sure. They weren't just relying on, you know, one person's account or a few seconds of grainy footage. Exactly. Uh, so they had a trail. They had a trail. They knew this thing was out there. Exactly. And they wanted to know what it was. Precisely. They brought in everyone involved, pilots, radar operators, anyone who might have even gotten a glimpse. And we're not talking about, you know, just a casual chat over coffee. Oh, I know, right? So what'd you see out there? Hmm, interesting. No, uh, we're talking intense debriefings. Right. People being grilled about what they saw, what they didn't see, every last detail. Okay, but we're talking 2004 here, right? Yeah. Was this when the whole UFO thing started being taken, uh, you know, a little more seriously? Or is it still pretty hush-hush back then? Well, that's what makes this case so pivotal, honestly. Yeah. You see, even though the Pentagon has become more open about UFOs in recent years. Right. Or, you know, UAPs. 
unidentified aerial phenomena, as they prefer to call them now. Right, right. The new term, yeah. Back then. It was a different story. They weren't exactly shouting about it from the rooftops. I bet. Okay, so what happened? Did they figure it out? Did they sweep it under the rug? Give me the details. This is where it gets really interesting. They analyzed the radar data. Mm -hmm. They reviewed those pilot testimonies. They went through everything with a fine-tooth comb. Wow. And you want to know the official conclusion? Hit me. They couldn't explain it. No way. Officially. It's still classified as unidentified. You're kidding. And remember, this is before, you know, the days of smartphones and everyone having a camera in their pocket. Oh, yeah. True, true. Social media wasn't what it is now. The fact that this story even got out at all, right. that it wasn't completely buried, that's telling in itself. It's like something straight out of the X-Files, you know? Right. Some shadowy government agency with a file labeled Nimitz Encounter stamped top secret. Hmm. It just makes you wonder what they knew, what they didn't know, and what they maybe didn't want to admit they didn't know. It's like they stumbled onto this puzzle piece, but it doesn't fit into any puzzle we know of. It's exciting, but also kind of unsettling, right? Because it forces us to, you know, confront the limits of what we know. We like to think we've got it all figured out. Right. But then something like the Nimitz encounter comes along. Yeah. And suddenly we're reminded that we're still just scratching the surface. And what I think is really fascinating is that this case... It wasn't just swept under the rug. This had a real impact, didn't it? Oh, absolutely. This was a turning point. You know, back in 2004, the whole UFO thing, it was still considered pretty fringe. But the Nimitz encounter, credible witnesses, radar data, it chipped away at that skepticism. People started to pay attention. They had to. Even the government couldn't ignore it. So what changed? What did they actually do? Well, this encounter, along with a few others like it, they really pushed the issue into the spotlight. And eventually, this led to something pretty significant, the creation of a special task force. Wait, hold on. The Pentagon created a task force specifically to investigate UFOs. They did. It's called the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. Yeah. AOIMSG for short. Their whole mission, to okay. collect and analyze data on UAPs, you know, all those unexplained things zipping around. So after decades of denying and dismissing, the government is finally taking this stuff seriously. It seems that way, yeah. And they're not just looking at grainy photos and eyewitness accounts anymore. Mm. They're looking at radar data, sensor readings, no. the kind of hard evidence that was collected during the Nimitz encounter. Wow. It really feels like we're in this like turning point in history, you know? For centuries, we've looked up at the stars and wondered if we're alone, and now it seems like we're finally getting some answers, or at least trying to. And that, I think, is the most exciting thing about the Nimitz encounter. It's not just a story about some, you know, strange lights in the sky. Right. It's a story about the unknown, about the possibility that there's more out there, that there's something else out there. It's a good reminder to, you know, stay curious, keep asking those questions, never stop exploring. Well said. And for those of you who, like us, are utterly hooked on this story, we'll have links to some further reading in the show notes, some great documentaries out there, too. So, you know, go down that rabbit hole. You won't regret it. And look, if anything you heard today sparked a thought, a question, even a healthy dose of skepticism, we encourage you to keep digging, explore different perspectives, weigh the evidence, and come to your own conclusions. Because that's what this deep dive is all about. It's not about telling you what to think. It's about giving you the tools to think for yourself. Until next time, keep looking up.